Claire Forestier reporting. Kicking into touch, Craig Brown's lawyers suing the news of the world's publishers over those religious bigot allegations. The Scotland coach wants an apology after claims he sang anti-Catholic songs on an answer phone. Another Harrier crash, an investigation started after the second in a week involving planes from RAF Cottesmore. Today's was in a field in Northumberland, the pilots in hospital. Sweetening the pill for the unionists, Tony Blair's amending the devolution bill for Northern Ireland to ensure a strict timetable for the handover of terrorist weapons. Phantom Menace Mania, the Star Wars prequel, premieres in Britain tonight. Hours later, it hits screens nationwide. Percy and Thomas chug into the big time. A big screen version of Thomas the Tank Engine's on track for next summer. Hollywood heartthrob Alec Baldwin set to star. And poetry in motion. Rail company Northern Spirit is paying a poet to roam its network writing verse to inspire its passengers and staff. IRN, it's 7.01. Paul Moulton on Kick Kick FM. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, you're never guessed what I'm actually in the bath. <laughs> what did you do? We, uh, we had a party at my house and then went on the town and uh, we, we were home by about 12 o'clock. We can't remember anything. <laughs> Can I wake you up? Do you want to talk to me at all? Uh, oh Let me know about it Saturday mornings, 6.30 till 10. Kick FM. Yes, thank you, Paul. It's the Island Aviation and Travel Classic Race. Eight laps, 34 miles and uh, three non-stars. But before we do that, we're still here in the holding area. I've actually got with me uh, Mr. Neil Hodgson, former World Superbike rider, now British Superbike rider, not on a Ducati, on a Suzuki. Yeah, well, I should be on a Ducati, really, you know, but um, it's my turn to ride the Suzuki, but it's a very fast bike and I, uh, I enjoy myself. Now, you're not a road racer as such, you're a circuit racer, but uh, what do you think of this? I, it's, I think it's good. It's a really good little course. Um, it, obviously, it's, it's very dangerous, but... I, I rode around on my own, and uh, when you're on your own, it's, it's just about perfect, really. I wouldn't like any other bikes around me. Any chance of a backy? Um, if you're crazy enough to get on the back of me, you are more <laughs> than welcome to get on the back. All right, enjoy the rest of the evening, Neil. Right, the, the uh, guys have now left the holding area, the uh, start of race four on the program. The second. The uh, guys have now left the holding area, the uh, start of race four on the program, the second race of the evening. And uh, let's just give you a rundown on the non-starters. There's only three this evening. Uh, number nine, number 21, and number 31. Uh, we did have an additional entry informed. That was number 33, Richard Coates. He was down to ride a 350 AJR Bull Taco. But uh, as he said to us before, I'm not riding the classic race, so I don't know what all that was about. But uh, certainly I didn't notice Dave madsen Migdal. He may be in there as well. If you do see a number 34, a 450 Ducati, that is indeed Dave madsen Migdal. Let's just give you a quick rundown on uh, the starting grid. It's uh, on the front row, Carl Wilkie, uh, number 11, Barry Wood, and number 30, Derek Worley. The second row of the grid, Colin Bevan, number one, number seven, John Knowles, and number five, Alan Phillips. And the third row in the grid, on the inside line, Jeff Jones, Vin Duckett, and Charles Weald. Now, hopefully, these boys should be with you around about now. Roy Moore at Cross Four Ways. Yes, we can hear them as normal uh, coming down, but uh, sedately, everything gets sorted out. We've got the headphones on, so we don't hear them as much as the spectators who are in and around here at Cross Four Ways, which number quite a few and been taking the hospitality of the Southern 100 catering in, bet catering in between races. But I'm pretty certain it'll be Alan Phillips who'll be heading the pack down through here. It's a bit of a tradition. He's always first out of the holding area on the old uh, PS3 there, PSA3. So I would imagine he'll be well in. But uh, Barry Wood getting up onto a start uh, up on the front of the grid on the 250. Well, it's usually the 250 is a good old ice between him and Bud Jackson. But Bud Jackson's not running as well as it should do. And Barry in with a good chance. Barry recovering from an accident at Union Mills in in TT practice week which he's now not quite recovered but certainly well enough to be in this particular one but it's not Alan Phillips heading the pack it is in fact number 10 Bud Jackson closely followed by number 11 Barry Wood on the white plates Derek Wally then it's Alan Phillips number 16 Charles Weald and they've pulled out a bit of an advantage there's the beautiful sounding Carl Wilkie on the Rob North 3 just listen to that though, he's only burbling it as he goes away from here. And here's last year's winners, Colin Bevan, 
not on the Rocket 3, it's that uh, Westlake, number 6, 12. Look out for number 12, because he's a flyer as well. Terry Kermode, and one of the few Yamahas which are eligible to compete in this particular class. 1932, Bob Doughty. There is Dave Madston Migdal, if you can hear him above the din. The beautiful sounding machine also of number 4 but we've struck him off the actual uh, starting list. I think he was listed as an unstarter, but certainly number four went through there. And 15 and 29, the Honda. And there's Ian Locker bringing up the gear, the back again as though like a, the same situation as last time, I would imagine, just been giving a, a test out on the 125 because I think that is the next race or the sidecar's the next race on the agenda. So all the classic machines, apart from one, that's number 27. That brings back a few memories too. With Andy Bacon on a 250 Montessa. Well, going back to the old Clips course circuit, the Montessa, Johnny Grace and one or two others campaigned them round there, single cylinders. No match for the MVs, but uh, certainly it's nice to hear a 250 Montessa going round here on the Southern 100 course, but not going awful well, I'm afraid to say, as he misfires away here from us at Cross Four Ways. And I don't think there's much many miles left in that particular machine on tonight. So they should be all getting round. It's a clutch start, Dave. So again, there'll be a thunder as they head down the bypass on the first lap. But I think they'll be tootling round Castletown Corner now, the corner. And they'll be into your view very shortly. Dave Moore at the start and finish. Yes, uh, also, guys, just mentioned that there's a change of machinery. That is uh, number 28. That's uh, Jeff Batos, is it, or Jeff Bates? And um, he was down to ride a 350cc Honda. Uh, he's now on an 828cc Norton. So uh, that's a change of machinery there. And I'm sure you've spotted lots more changes of machinery than I certainly have, Roy. Um, but uh, yes, the bikes are now coming down nice and leisurely and uh, saving everybody's eardrums, thankfully, down here at the start and finish. But uh, I think there's uh, some wax going to be flying very, very shortly indeed when these boys get going because there is no sound like it on earth. There is nothing to experience this. Classic bikes all together heading for Balakagan. Now, the TT, yes, it's great. We have the classic bikes going around there one at a time. We can take our photos nice and leisurely, but this is the real thing classic racing on a short circuit road racing style as they now all line up on the grid we'll just go through that uh, top three again for you now Carl Wilkie number two he's on the inside line on the grid number 11 Barry Wood and number 30 Derek Wally then followed by number one Colin Bevan number seven John Knowles number five Alan Phillips and number three, Jeff Jones, number six, Ben Duckett, and number 16, Charles Weald, they make up the third row of the grid. As the marshals now come up behind them at the back, they're all sitting there waiting, and uh, there's no point in me really giving you any commentary once they start, because you're not going to hear a thing. You're just going to hear the wonderful, wonderful sound of, oh, how many, six, two, three dozen classic machines racing along the balance circuit here, as part of 799 towards Balakagan Corner. Now the sign is out, the flag goes up, and we're still holding, we're still holding, and they're off, they're away. Here we go, there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of jostling. Number one is certainly winning Colin Bevin. Number two, Carl Wilkie. Number 30, Derek Wally was third. Number three, Jeff Jones is fourth away. Uh, nearly everyone's away now. I think there's uh, two or three more bikes. 25, very slow getting away there. And uh, number five, he's away as well. And finally, now this could be an early retirement for number 27. Yes, his hands are on his hips. That's number 27, Andy Bacon. He's not going to make it round, I don't think. No, he's pulling him, but certainly uh, they got away there. So we certainly had Carl, Colin Bevan. Carl Wilkie was second away, 30 Derek Wally, and uh, Jeff Jones was fourth away, 
fastest from here at the start finish line over to Roy Moore across four ways. Well I would imagine they'll be out of Balabeg hairpin now through Williams and heading down towards us here across four ways and as I say three classes to keep our eyes out on here the particular ones it'll be I would imagine one of the 500 750 class who'll be leading on the road and then they'll be having their own little private dices down the field but you say it was number one Colin Bevan who got away the quickest on that one it was a, a rocket ship that thing for a 750 and I'm quite expecting to see him being here first but I think Carl Wilkie will have something to do with it now that he can unleash these rocket threes here but there's a, certainly a triple sound coming down towards cross four ways here but it sounds as though there's a twin just ahead of it the distinctive number one plate should be number one on the road but it certainly sounds like a rocket three which is fast approaching cross four ways the brakes are the same and it is it's number two Carl Wilkie ahead on the road here at cross four ways followed by number 30 Derek Wally then it's number one Colin Bevan number three number seven John Knowles number eight Les Trotter 16 5 then the first of the 250s number 10 and number 11 6 4 14 32 17 12 there's Terry Kermode on the Yamaha 26 watch him make his way up through the field 24 Bob Doughty 28 Dave Madsen Mickle goes up the inside 34 20 23 and 18 and bringing up the rear 15 but they should be with you now Dave with the start and finish yes we're waiting for them now there's no sign of anyone just yet but you can certainly hear that rumble in the distance they should be here any second I would imagine they're coming around Castletown corner as I speak yes there's certainly something coming this way now you can hear it but uh, my eyes aren't um, focusing on any bikes just yet but certainly uh, Colin Bevan was quickest away there, but uh, certainly somewhere along the way between here and Cross Four Ways. Carl Wilkie certainly dived up. And here we go. The first two bikes in the road, they're taking the centre line. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's a procession of bikes coming through, but it's number two. Yes, number two, Carl Wilkie from number 30, Derek Wally. Colin Bevan was third. Jones four. Number 14 passes through here, Dave Furlow, there's 17, Ivan Coates, 32. Ian Gray, number 12, number 26 together there, that's Terry Kermode and Harold Bromley. 24 goes past us here, that's Bob Doughty, 28, 34. Jeff Bates, 20, 23 there, Rainer Michel from Germany, and Dennis Christian, number 23. But uh, that was a wonderful, wonderful sight here on the circuit. It was one long procession of motorbikes, all in a line, hardly a hair's breadth between them, all coming down, all taking the central line down here through the start-finish straight. And uh, we'll hand you back to Roy Moore across four ways. Wonderful, wonderful racing. It certainly is, Dave. And you can just imagine somebody with a radio in, say, Birmingham, tuning in, trying to find a radio station and coming across Manx Radio and listening to this lot without the commentary. It would be absolutely superb. But that Triumph 3 was they're actually flying down in here to cross four ways. Number two, Carl Wilkie, leading on the road, leading the race and leading his particular class. But there was a good old dice. Uh, Derek Wally was up there amongst them, so he would be the leader of the 500 class. And there was a dice. It was Bud Jackson who was heading Barry Wood, both on the 250 Suzuki, so look out for them. Terry Kermode, I think, must have gassed it up at the start, and I'm pretty certain he'll pick his way through, but we can hear the triple now, howling down past the cottage on the breaking point and coming into our view very, very shortly out from the back door. We've got to be sure now we give you a minute before we go back to you. But at the same time, it's Derek Wally. Derek Wally's taking the lead. Number 30 from number two, from number one, from three, from seven, from eight. It's numbers only. It's Les Trotter and number 16, Charles Weald. And then it's number five, Alan Phillips on another of the triples. But Derek Wally, number 30, is taking the lead here across four ways. Number six, and it's Barry Wood now who leads the 250s but only just from number, uh, Bud Jackson number 4 there who's listed as an unstarter but going well and 14 that's the third of the 250s Dave Thurlow another local rider number 32 that's another one that's going through Ian Gray another local performance there number 26 number 12 there is Terry Kermode and closely followed by number 24, Bob Doughty. There's the single cylinder machine and Dave Madston Migdal. It must be a bit of a cultural shock to get off the uh, the RC30 and onto that, but a very good ride by him. 
and 23 and smoking as he gets on the brakes, Rainer Michelle, number 18 and 15, they're here with us now, 18, Colin Perslow and number 15, Bob Simmons. He got the ride, only completing one lap in practice, but they won't be too far away from you, Dave Moore, at the start and finish. Yes, they're here now, that's Derek Wallace. From number one, and number three, Jeff Jones. John Knowles comes through as well. In fact, Carl Wilkie's retired. Carl Wilkie, his arms up, he's coasting, he's coming into the pits. I don't know what his problem is, his engine's still running, but his arm came up, he came in, and uh, that is Paul Wilkie, the end of him for the Classic this evening. Another retirement, uh, we'll have to confirm it, because he came in, but he may have gone back out, that was 25, Rodney Trimble. But certainly the news is here that um, number 30, Derek Wally, is still winning from number one, Colin Bevin. Third place, Jeff Jones, number three. In fourth place is number seven, John Knowles. Um, we didn't catch the fifth one, but sixth place is number 16, Charles Weald. Seventh is number five, Alan Phillips. Second was Carl Wilkie. Second was Carl Wilkie uh, until he retired. And then uh, ninth position was number six, Vin Duckett. And I think uh, the way these guys are on of charge, it's time to hand back to Roy Moore across four ways because these guys are just going like Joey. Number 29 there, that looks a little bit terminal to me. 29, Gerard O'Kane Sr. on the Honda. And it does, in fact, expire just away from us here across four ways. Uh, Gerard O'Kane Sr. and Gerard O'Kane Jr. Uh, two regular campaigners down here. One of Barry Wood's quiz questions, who are the latest father and son to have completed. I put uh, Selwyn and Jason Griffiths down, but I was wrong. Number 19 is here now. That's not the one we're looking for, but we'll give him a mention. Colin Tate Parker. And that Honda has expired just away, but it's Derek Wally, but only just from number one, Colin Bevan, closely followed by number three, Jeff Jones. Then it's number seven, John Knowles, number eight, Les Trotter, number 16, Charles Wheel, and number five, so it's the order as it was on the last lap, number five, Alan Phillips. And he gives us a good old right handful as he goes away. Number six is with us here now, Vin Duckett. Number 11, Barry Wood still leads the 250s, but only just from Alan Bud Jackson, who Obviously, has got that machine running a little bit better, and they're both tucked down behind the streamline as they accelerate away towards Church Bend. There's number four and 14, so that's the big twin cylinder machine of Ron Saw, and number 14, Dave Thurlow, but it's still Derek Wally who leads this particular race, but only just from number one, Colin Bevan. But uh, look out for John Knowles as well. They're well in contention. Number 26 just drops it down through the box. Harold Bromley, and then the distinctive sound of number 24, Bob Doughty. That is about the indication, Dave, that they're somewhere in your vicinity. OK, here we go. It's number one. Number one spinning. Number seven has got it to Derek Wally. And Jeff Jones, third place. Yes, yeah, so there's a prize here. Somehow he was between cross four ways and here at the start finish line. Colin Bevan has taken the lead from Derek Wally. The way Wally that came through here before, he thought he's opening up a gap, he's opening up a gap, but he's, he's going to break away, but no. Whether he slowed down or had a moment or whatever, but Colin Bevan certainly caught up with him and taken him. Of course, the big news still, that Carl Wilkie is out. He's retired, but everyone else has come through safely. So we can give you first number one, Colin Bevan. Second, number 30, Derek Wally. Third, number three, Jeff Jones. Four, number seven, John Knoll. Certainly, as Roy was saying, is not out of it. Les Trotter, number eight, he's in fifth place. Number 16, Charles Weald, he's in uh, sixth place. Number seven, uh, sorry, seventh position, number 19, Colin Tate Parker. Eighth position, number five, Alan Phillips. As uh, we now come through on our fourth lap, and over to Roy Moore, across four ways turn our volume up just to get some uh, response there because we couldn't hear when we were due to come back on air but it's very quiet here across four ways at the moment but that won't be the situation for very much longer because I'm pretty certain hammering down towards us here if he was holding on to the lead at the start and finish number one Colin Bevan just got ahead there of Derek Wally so it'll be interesting to see what the position is I'm leaving it to you Dave to get the positions through because they change so quickly on a short circuit like this that the start and finish is the only time where they count 
attempt the one, two, three, four. But absolutely bang on cue you were there because we can hear the machines hammering down. I don't think there's many back markers, but there's three absolutely together, and it's number one who's ahead from number three, Jeff Jones, but Derek Wally right behind them, and John Knowles going extremely well as well. So that's the four, then it's Les Trotter, number eight, number 16, Charles Weald. And number five, Alan Phillips. I think through the start and finish, there was somebody included there who shouldn't have been. That's the first five, six through here at Cross Four Ways on the starting the fifth lap, I do believe. But we'll again, we'll leave that to you to decide. Number six, that's Finn Duckett safely through and it's Barry Wood who still heads Alan Bud Jackson in the 250 battle little marks appearing on the expansion chambers of those two machines now as they're cranking them over 19 that was the man who got amongst it he's been lapped I think number four Ron Saw he's safely through as well and closely followed we just looked down to see the program but we can't pick that one particular one we'll just give you numbers 17 and 32 well on the pace as well Ian Gray on the Sealy Westlake so that was the order through. It was still Colin Bevan just holding on the advantage from number three, Jeff Jones, but uh, Derek Wally closely behind him, number 30. That was the top three, and John Knowles not out of it either. I think they won't be too far away with you, Dave Moore. Yes, they're far away at Balakagan now, and Brave Boy, number three, is leading Jeff Jones from number one, Colin Bevan. Derek Wally is dropping back slightly in third place, number 30. John Knowles, number seven, in fourth. But certainly, as they came down here, past the uh, bus on the start-finish line, it was uh, Jeff Jones leading from Colin Bevan. But Colin Bevan was looking and looking and looking, pulling out. Then, no, I'm not going to get the power. Back in, slipstreaming, slipstreaming. And as they got to Balakagan, they stayed in those positions. So, on the start of lap five, we have number three, Jeff Jones. He's now leading from uh, number one, Colin Bevan. Number 30, Derek Wally, is in uh, third place. Number fourth is still John Knowles. Uh, fifth place still goes to Les Trotter, number eight. The sixth place, number 16, still uh, Charles Weald. Seventh place, number five, Alan Phillips. And uh, eighth place, number six, Vin Duckett. So uh, this is a race and a half. The lead has swapped now. I don't know. Certainly on laps, we have seemed to have a different leader on every lap. At the start, it was certainly Cole Wilkie was leading until he retired down there at lap three. Then Derek Wally was leading at two. Lap three, it was Colin Bevan. Lap four, it's Jeff Jones. So they're all getting a piece of the action, all having a look at seeing what it's like out front. Who's going to be front? Who's going to be at the lead, I should say? with uh, Roy Moore at Cross Four Ways. Yes, we await with interest, and the road is absolutely quiet as it was the last time. Just a few specks of oil coming away from some of these machines here, there, and everywhere as they go through, and none more so than on the, the first lap, the sighting lap. But we can hear the machines coming. It distinctly sounds as though it's a th triple... I would think it is, but it's a twin not too far behind. There's a triple that's ahead, but only just. And Derek Wally goes up the inside. No, it doesn't quite make it. Number three, 31 and seven. But what an impressive ride by John Knowles there. He is absolutely flying. So that was the order. It was still number one, number three, Jeff Jones. We just get these through. It's Les Trotter, number 16, and then Alan Phillips. They absolutely flew into the cross four ways here. Derek Wally had a look at the inside of number three, Jeff Jones, thought better of it. Number one, Colin Bevan, keeping a discreet distance behind, but getting closer and closer was number John Knowles, number seven. There's Vin Duck at number six. So this has got all the makings of a good race. There's Barry Wood holding on to that distinctive 250. I think that's uh, Dickie Watson's 250. That's the Jackson Suzuki number 10. Hasn't been running all that well off late, but certainly Barry back on form again and leading the 250s. 14 has to straighten it up a little bit to go around, and he's just got ahead of number four there. 14, Dave Thurlow, just ahead of number four, Ron Saw. So what an excellent race this is turning out to be. They're on their fifth lap. They'll be starting their sixth as they come into the view of you, Dave. Down there to start and finish. Yes, it's three, it's 30, it's one, and it's seven, number three. Jeff Jones is leading from Derek Wally. Colin Bevan is in third. Those three tucked together with uh, John Knowles a second behind. There's certainly nothing separating them. A bike's length between each of the top three riders. Absolutely wonderful sight seeing these boys coming down here. Central line, head down, backside up going for it and on a flyer so there we'll just run over that again number three Jeff Jones is leading from uh, number 30 Derek Wally number one now is Colin Bevan he's dropped down a place he's number six that's Finn Duckett but uh, in fourth 
is still John Knowles, number seven, about a second behind, followed by number eight, Les Trotter. 16 is Charles Weald. And number five is Alan Phillips. He's still seventh. Number six, uh, eighth is number six, I should say, Vin Duckett. Ninth, number 11, Barry Wood, with number 10, Alan Bud Jackson. By the time we gave him a mention, he's in 10th position. So uh, this is where the action is. Cross four ways is where the action is. The Balang circuit is where the action is this evening. There's another bike in view here. Listen to this. Number 17 there, Ivan Coates. No more bikes in view, but uh, the bikes that have been in view is an absolutely wonderful sight to see here on the, on the Balan circuit. On, uh, it's part of the Southern 199. I'm out of breath. Roy Moore, cross four ways. Dennis Christian, who was just the last to go through there. 32 is, just a bit of smoke coming out of that as well. Smoking a bit, you know. Ian Gray on the 500, Sealy Westlake. But this is the battle. It was Derek Wally who had a little nibble up the inside on the approach here on the brakes into cross four ways. And it's Derek Wally who's got it. He's got it this time. He's up the inside. Number 30 from three from seven. John Knowles takes number one, Kirk. Colin Bevan just up the inside as well. So there was an immediate change in the leaderboard there. Up, up to the front goes number 30, Derek Wally. He went up the inside of number three, Jeff Jones. And then when Colin, uh, Colin Bevan was looking, John Knowles nipped up the inside of him. It looks as though the triple there of Alan Phillips has got ahead of number 16. 16 Charles Weald so there's a change in position in that particular one but this is going to be a real dash they're on their sixth lap now this eight lap Island Aviation sponsored and travel classic race an individual event race four on the program running to schedule and giving us an absolute feast of noise smells and entertainment down here on the Balan circuit number six there Vin Duckett Seely Matchless and Barry Wood still leads the 250s and gets it under the pipe and on the revs soar up to 10 11,000 and Bud Jackson still holding on to second place in that but Derek Wally leads across four ways on this lap will that be the same position as they head towards you Dave at the start and finish yes they come through now this is Jeff Jones Derek Wally and John Knowles takes Colin Bevan here for the third spot as they came in maybe they swapped around I don't know but as they go up towards Balakagan it's Derek Wally certainly in second there just to mention the 32 Ian Gray he is retired Yes, it's certainly number three, Jeff Jones is leading, Derek Wally is second. There's a half a second between, not even that, a, a few wheels length between them. Third place, number one, Colin Bevan. Um, we, and in fact, as they came over the start and finish line, but John Knowles took him to take third place ahead of Colin Bevan. Number eight it is uh, Les Trotter, he was in fifth place. Number five, Alan Phillips, sixth. And seventh is 16, this is number, three. number six, Finn Duckett going through there. There's another bike on the road here. Number 11, Barry Wood on the 247cc Suzuki. We'll get this next bike through. Alan Bud Jackson, number 10. Number 4, Ron Saw. Followed there by number 14, Dave Thurlow. Back to Roy Moore, cross four ways. It'll be the distinctive uh, yellow and black cross flag that will go out to indicate they're on their last lap and they'll be trying one another out now on these particular places. Already... Derek Wally will know that he can nip up the inside here across four ways, whether he'll do it on this particular lap and then hold it on the dash to the cash. He might be a little bit underpowered uh, from the triple on the ex exit from the bridge, but certainly he'll try, I would think, to get a little bit of distance between himself if he's going to win this particular one. But certainly Jeff Jones, Colin Bevan and John Knowles will have something to say about that as they head down towards us here now. I don't think they'll be too far away. It sounds as though they're absolutely close together, and they are. And it's 30, number 30 from John. John Knowles, John Knowles up to second from number three, number three there hanging on to third place, Jeff Jones, we haven't seen number one as yet so it looks as though Colin Bevan, mechanical problems for him, no he is here but dropping back a bit, he's off the pace now, number one Colin Bevan and shortly to be swallowed up by number five Dave Phillips, in fact Colin Bevan is tearing away from here but it's uh, Alan Phillips ahead there of Les Trotter. 
as they exit from cross four ways down to the very swift right and left into it but John Knowles up to second from Derek Wally and dropping back a little bit there that will give them might just give them that little bit of distance for the extra power of the triple which will be required to take them away as the photographing helicopter goes up overhead here is getting must get some excellent pitches as they now will be sweeping through the left very fast left hander at the stadium hard on the brakes in there what will be the position as they go through to start the last lap as the 250s still led by Barry Wood go through Dave Moore will know at the start and finish the uh, last lap flags out here we go it's Wally from no from I was going to say for those it's not it's Jeff Jones Jeff Jones is up into second now Derek Wally from Jeff Jones as Jeff Jones is looking to take him for the lead John Knowles has dropped back, but um, Derek Wally is leading from Jeff Jones, and um, John Knowles, who was second across four ways there, has dropped back. And Alan Phillips comes past here, passing uh, number 23, Dennis Christian. I hope you can hear me above all the uh, noise here. But certainly as they came down through here, somewhere along the line, Derek Wally has regained the lead. He's now ahead of Jeff um, Jeff Jones with uh, John Knowles down in third place as another retirement coming into view now who's this it's number one Colin Bevan Bevan is a retirement he's coasting in hand on his knee determined look but uh, his race is run that's it from uh, Colin Bevan this evening so we'll just give you a quick uh, race order on this final lap, number 30, Derek Wally leads. Number three, Jeff Jones. Third, number seven, John Knowles. Fourth, number five, Alan Phillips. Sixth, number eight, Les Trotter. Seventh, number 16, Charles Beaver. Um, uh, followed by number six, Finn Duckett. And to see who is going to be first over the line on this, the final lap, we hand you back to Roy Moore across four. Second, Jeff Jones. Third, number seven, John Knowles. So the 20 yards was certainly caught up there, but it's Derek Wally's way, race. He's won here. Number 19 comes in. I think that's a retirement. Colin Tate Parker. That's not the fourth place man. We're still waiting for the fourth man on the road as we make our way down towards the um, paddock. Here we go. Number five comes through. Alan Phillips, followed by number eight, Les Trotter, and number 16, Charles Weald. Maybe you could take a few more of those riders that are passing you right now, Roy. Yes, just by the time you get into the it takes a bit of time to get from where your commentary place is. You've got to be realistic and say you've got to see who goes across the line, and then the boys will sort them out into first, second, and third. But I think we were quite right in there that Derek Wally just had that advantage, that distance that he'd pulled out here on the approach to cross four ways. He must have held it. Probably number three, Jeff Jones, got a little bit back on the very fast swoop into the stadium, but a very experienced rider in Derek Wally just held on for what looks like a great win in the Ireland Aviation and Travel Classic race down here at Palown. Well, there's still a few circulating, and while you get your breath, Dave, and get down into the holding area and get them time to get sorted out, congratulations handed out. Bob Doughty just nips up the inside there of 26 and they've had a right old battle all through the race Harold Bromley but it looks like the Suki Suki will take the advantage what are the thoughts of the winners Dave back at the grandstand yes uh, the timing is absolutely perfect I think I've got Derek Wally here there. Derek Wally yeah I had a good run there a bit of a um, tussle there with Jeff got back in front and I got back by him and I've just had to keep my head down and I hoped I stayed in front by the time the line came you know there's racing and there's racing, but that was racing. That was, that was good racing, yeah. I've not done anything like that for a long time. How many times were you in the lead there? Do you know? It was swapping four, around soon in the top. Yeah, we're swapping backwards and forwards. Yeah, it was really good. Uh, across four ways there, Roy was saying that you had 20 yards uh, lead, but certainly by the time you came to the start and finish line, it wasn't that. No, um, I was having a bit of trouble with my wrist. It's swollen up on the air and getting the clutch, you know. So I'm just holding it in and just going down through the gears. Is that the bike doing that to you during the that's race? Me. That's me. Yeah, well, halfway through, you know. But no, Jeff rode well as well, you know. So that's how nice. did the bike handle then? Excellent, excellent, yeah. Made for the uh, balance circuit? Made for the job, yeah. Wonderful. Well done, Derek Wally. Another well, cylinder, we might be all right. I'm sorry? Another cylinder, we might run it easily. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. It comes to Jeff Jones, second place man. Signs in. Jeff Jones. Nearly at the end there, um, you're certainly trailing going into cross four ways, but uh, coming up to the start and finish line, you had him in his sights, but uh, not quite. Uh, maybe you could have done with the start and finish line a few further yards down the track. Correct, yes. But uh, excellent ride by that man, excellent ride. This was much faster than that, but uh, he's a much faster rider on there. You know. So what about that race? Tell us about it. I mean, the dicing, 
first place, second place, third place, back up to second place. Hard race all the way through. The oh, sweat is pouring off. I know that, yes, yeah. yeah. I can go to bed now for half a while, I think. <laughs> okay, well done. Second place. We'll now look for the uh, third place man if he's around here somewhere. We'll have a wander around there's Barry Wood. Certainly he seems to have enjoyed himself. Let's just take a wander through here as uh, Derek Wally's machine goes up on the podium. It's, uh, we haven't got a third place man here at the moment. Uh, only two bikes. No, we haven't got a third place man here, so uh, we'll just hand back to you for a second, Roy. What a race. Yeah, it was good stuff, wasn't it? Although John Knowles is a bit shy as well, so he might have slipped out of your grasp in that particular thing. I think it was him that was holding on to third place as they went round. But that was an excellent contribution to the evening's uh, racing, that classic race. We're just getting our programme sorted out for the next, but everything back on track here at Balloon for that particular one. But the sights and the sounds, and just as we thought, just Derek Wally just held on to that particular one and just got through. So some excellent racing down here at Balloon. I don't know who got the better of the dice between 26 and 24 there. I think Bob Doughty probably just took it on the Suzuki. And I think it looks as though Barry Wood was the winner of the 250 class. Obviously, Derek Wally would take class 3, 501 to 850. And, well, yes, he would do because it's 501. It all depends what the CC of that particular machine is. He might have been the winner of class 2, actually, 351 to 500. I just looked down to see that it is listed as a 496 matchless, so he would be in class 2. So that, in fact, would give Jeff Jones, number 3, the class win in class 3, which is 501 to 850. So up to 350 looks as though it was Barry Wood who took the honours there from Bud Jackson. In class 2, 351 to 500, it looks as though it would be the overall winner, but winner of class as well, Derek Wally, on the 496 matchless. And then for Jeff Jones, it will be a class win, 501 to 850 cc on the triple but the triple not quite getting the better of the single machine but i do believe the presentations are now taking place dave yes they are barry wood is certainly up here we have he is the winner of uh, class one uh, class two winner and race winner there uh, derek wally on the uh Sealy. as uh, jeff jones receives his wreath and his hat his garland and uh, number 11 here barry wood There, so uh, while we wait, we'll have, try and have a word with uh, Barry Wood in a minute, but this could be a good point just to hand back to Manx Radio Studios. Imagine being a child whose life has been turned upside down by a crisis beyond their control. That child needs comfort and security. It's one of the reasons to think about fostering. You don't have to be a genius. You just need to be able to give sensitive care and understanding alongside the professionals who are there to sort things out. It's not always easy, but it is worthwhile. Call Helen or Ruth on 678 301. Want the crispiest, most wholesome produce? Take a look at your local ShopRite's Fresh Marketplace. Their daily fresh deliveries are carefully inspected, ensuring only the finest products reach the ShopRite shelves. Only mouth-watering good is in peak condition in the bakery and delicatessen and the pick of fruit and vegetables. Plus, naturally, the butchery stocks the best prime quality local meats. In fact, ShopRite is so confident of their food's freshness, they'll double guarantee it. If you're unhappy with anything, they'll replace and refund immediately. No fuss, no hassle. Satisfaction guaranteed and your money back. ShopRite, serving man for over 25 years. Now, everyone knows the tale of the elephant who was frightened of the mouse. But not many people will admit to being afraid of a mouse, especially if the mouse is attached to a computer. Vegan's Lounge now offer friendly tuition and an introduction to the PC, word processing, typing, email, the internet, and more, with a one-hour day or evening course for just £5. So don't give up. Call in, have a coffee, and learn at Vegan's Lounge in Duke Street, Douglas where the mouse won't take the mickey out of you. 18 minutes away from 8, back to Dave Moore, live at the Balloon Circuit, Dave. Yes, thanks, Paul. I've got uh, Class 1 winner Barry Wood here. Local man on the rostrum. Yes, local man through and through, Dave. Very proud of it, too. <laughs> what a race, though. Um, you weren't involved with the bunch at the, at the front, but certainly you were riding your own race there. Yeah, I got on the front row. I got a good practice time, but with having a smaller bike, I knew there wouldn't be any chance of battling for overall honours. 
but I had the dice with Jackson early on. Bud was pushing me very hard. I had those signals, and I had to keep looking back to see that he was getting a bit further behind. Unfortunately, he, he did do. How did the bike handle out there? It handles handled as well as you'd expect from a 30-year-old road bike. It's, it's, it's hard work, but, uh, you know, it's it's as good as you'll get, and it's, it's good enough for me. Who's older, you or the bike? <laughs> well, the bike is... I think I was just about starting school when this bike was made. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are. Well done. Thanks very much, Dave. Cheers. Okay, cheers, Barry. So, yeah, Barry Wood, winner of uh, Class 1 there. The uh, junior race guys, they're pulling into the holding area. Uh, I'm going to go and catch my breath, Roy. I think I'll hand back over to you at Cross Four Ways. Yes, we can do that, uh, I would think, because we've got to combine the Man Auto car sales and the station garage, race two, junior. And this should be a good old dash as well, because we've got one, two, fives, two fifties, throw in a few four hundreds, and you should have a good entry. We haven't got the updated non-starters on that particular one, I'm afraid. We'll leave that to you to a later date to get it sorted out. But I know you've got to make your way now round back up to the see the start of this particular one. But I think uh, everything running to schedule, 7.45 down here at Palown, and we're into race three of tonight's programme. I'm looking forward to the sidecars actually here, because we were on duty on Monday night. We came down for a look, and we were certainly down last night when they were practising early on. And I think that's going to be something to look forward to, not only here at Cross Four Ways, but certainly on all the tight right-handers which you have down here on the Balloon circuit, because with the chairs being on the left-hand side, the passengers have got to work overtime to keep that power down onto the back wheel as they go through. But the Station Garages Junior Race and the Man Auto Car Sales, well, there's a few star men in that, and none more so than number three, Joey Dunlop, and also Robert Dunlop in there amongst them, and give him plenty of time to get his machine sorted out, because practice last night, it did actually stop down here across four ways with mechanical problems. Ian Locker, well, we've noticed him going round on the 125, so he might opt for that. And I suppose that is a slight disadvantage in the fact of combining the two races. You'd have to make a decision as to what you're going to ride in each particular one. Look out for number 10, though, Neil Richardson, last year. It was a classic battle between three riders. They all arrived at uh, Castletown Bridge. Onto the bridge they went, and down they went, like the old ring a ring of rosies And it was Neil Richardson who, I think, was first up and got it started and got to the line before Jason Griffiths. He was involved in that battle as well, and I think number nine, Owen McNally. So that was last year, but if you want to know about last year, all the programme contains all the results and everything that you need to know about it. There'll be a few riders who'll have to get their breath back before they go out on this particular race because they've just been riding in the Classic. So the, amongst them will be Bud Jackson and one or two others. And uh, Richard Coates, well, he's got the old Vimto Honda tonight. And in uh, last year again, that classic race when Paul Dedman, and I'm sure he'll be listening round the circuit somewhere, recovering his injuries from the, the North West, uh, allegedly retiring, but that is always the case. Uh, he, he had a tremendous ride on the old Paul Bird Vimto Honda and just pipped Ian Locker virtually on the line. It was only a wheel's length between the pair of them after a tremendous le race last year. So Ian Locker might go one better if he opts for the 250, but with the fact that he's been going round on the 125, that might be the one that he's taking out. So we're looking forward to it. You've got more information down there, I think, uh, Dave? Yes, I have. Uh, I'll run through those non-starters. Of course, uh, this is the junior solo founders and junior race combined. So we'll go through the non-starters first of all. Uh, they are numbers 7, 8, 9, 15, 22, 23, 24, 26, 63, 77, 79 and 80. There are additional entries on the um, program. They are number 2, Jason Griffiths on the 250 DTR Yamaha. Number 21, Darren Burns, he's on the 125 Honda. Number 78, Kevin Murphy on the 400 uh, Bimota. And number 82, the old crooner himself, Dean Martin, on the 250 Honda. And I promise I won't say that again. Now, uh, as I'm walking down towards the start and finish line, I'm just feeling a few specks of light rain. Now, the weathermen did say that we would get some showers overnight. Whether we're going to get a shower now or not, I don't know. But uh, certainly, 
if we did have a little bit of wet uh, dampness on the track, that will suit the man who is uh, on third place on the grid, but uh, on the left-hand side of the front row, that's Joey Dunlop on the 250 Honda. We know as mu how much he enjoys riding in the wet. The guys are still in the holding area, so we'll move on to, and we'll give you the starting grid for this race two and five, the third race of tonight. And if it matches the two we had already, then we are certainly in for a treat. So let's give you that front row. On the right-hand side, on the front, Ian Locker on a 250 Honda. Number 16, Richard Coates on the 250 Honda. Then Joey Dunlop, no surprise, a 250 Honda. Second row of the grid is Neil Richardson on the 250 Honda. Number two, Jason Griffiths is on the 250 Yamaha. Number 28, John McCulloch on the 125 Honda. Making up the third row of the grid, number 33, Brian Neal on a 250 Honda. Number 18, Darren Lindsay on a 125 Honda. And number four, Robert Dunlop on the 125 Honda. And the fourth row of the grid, we've got Chris Palmer, Matt Jackson, and number 38, Alan Bud Jackson. Well, the rain could well be holding off. There is a dirty black cloud. I think there's one actually over Roy Moore at Cross Four Ways, and there is one of me here at the, near the start and finish line here on the Balloon Circuit. But uh, the sun is trying to break through, so hopefully it will stay dry for this race. Over to you just for a second. While I get my breath back, Roy Moore at Cross Four Ways. Well, you know the good old man saying you'll not get any rain with this wind, but uh, there is a big dark black cloud, as you so graphically described, right above me, but I'm all right because I've just had a cup of tea from the lady in the house and a couple of penguins, which we might get a chance to uh, operate on uh, in between commentary, as it were. But where, we, where the actual weather is coming from, I don't think there's going to be too many problems. It's coming from Port Lamora down the road, so it looks quite bright, and, and I think... I don't think there's anything to panic about in that particular instance about rain. The clouds are quite high as well, and on my right there's some actual blue sky. So as Peter Neal always says, if there's enough blue sky to put a patch on a person's trousers, you're going to be okay. So I don't think it's a problem down here. We're going to get the racing in under dry conditions, which is going to be good really, because like everything else, we always just hope that it is dry. Dry conditions, dry roads, dry visibility, because there's been some terrible weather down here at Balloon. The Southern Club seemed to get it right or wrong in TT week. It's either pouring with rain, but I think the worst ever uh, conditions I can remember was after one TT. I don't know whether it was last year, two, three years ago. As you get older, the mind goes a little bit, but Joey Dunlop demoralised the opposition with an absolutely tremendous ride in what were described as diabolical conditions. There was water running down the road right. you could hardly see. But Dave, I think you've yes. got some more information there. Uh, well, a couple of pieces of, inf well, three pieces of information. Uh, the rain is starting. I can actually see the rain now, and it is starting to fall. Whether it's going to be a quick shower or not, I don't know. At the moment, you wouldn't think it would affect the, the bikes too much. But certainly, whether it could be delay anything, the fact that they'll be on slick tyres, it's uh, maybe a lot of inter decisions, maybe go for an intermediate, maybe go for uh, for the wet tyres to stay with the six, we don't know. One piece of information, uh, the driver of a very, very nice BMW indeed, registration 102RMN. Uh, your lights are flashing if uh, you are listening to the radio or someone who knows who the owner is of the BMW 102RMN. It's here by the start-finish, well, um, I say a few hundred yards from the start-finish line here on the balance circuit. You can come down and uh, switch it off because otherwise you won't be able to get home tonight. The um, battery is going to be dead, I think, by the way that's flashing.